Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another Wednesday webinar session. I'm Mike Coyazzo, Product Manager here at Ruskin Company. So today's webinar session will focus primarily on Ruskin's top performing commercial dampers. So these are the most widely used in commercial HVAC systems and air handling units. We'll also look at how multiple section damper assemblies are configured, and then I'll touch briefly on damper operators and accessory. And do wanna remind you that Ruskin does have a five-year uh, product warranty on all of our products. So many of you that have visited the Ruskin headquarters, uh, you may already be aware that we have an AMCA accredited test facility here. And so we can actually conduct damper leakage testing, pressure drop testing, along with actuator cycle testing. And this allows our results to be validated more quickly with AMCA and helps to get products to market much sooner. So it does have, it has its advantages where you can, you can do in-house testing. In addition to the damper side, we also test uh, our louvers. We can perform wind-driven rain testing, impact testing, pressure drop testing. So both our damper and louvers benefit by having a test facility uh, right next door. So the first damper model we'll look at is our CD60, which is produced of galvanized steel uh, for the frame and blades. Uh, it's AMCA certified to class 1A leakage rating, which by the way is the lowest AMCA leakage rating for a control damper. It uses a true one-piece airfoil shaped blade, which gives it very extremely low pressure drop, and our blade seals are mechanically fastened to ensure you know, years of longevity. Uh, they're not glued on. And you can see in the image in the center of the screen there, the mechanical fastening is done by uh, crimping the blade. So basically the blades is held in by a crimping on the uh, on both sides of the blade, so both ends of the blade and then both sides of the blade. And the blade some material is referred to as rescaprene. So if you're familiar with santaprene, it's basically the same thing, we call it rescaprene. So it's a thermal plastic elastomer, extremely durable, it's the same type of material that they use in automotive parts, commercial blazing seals, and electrical components. A lot of industries use the same material. Our standard bearings for the CV60 are oil-infused 316 stainless steel, and our flexible uh, jam seals uh, are also stainless steel. Now, the image on the upper right shows our standard extended half-inch uh, shaft, and this is provided standard with all your single-section damper sizes unless you were to order a damper with an internally mounted actuator uh, or a larger damper size, uh, which would use jack shafting. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more on jack shafting in a bit. But your standard single sections would, would come uh, supplied with that extended shaft you see there in the, in the image. Uh, the CV60 is still our most specified commercial control damper. So it's basically at the top of the list. Now, the CD60 is also available in a vertical blade version. We call that the CD60B. So the vertical blade orientation it basically provides two things. It allows for an actuator to go on the top or the bottom of the damper if you have side-to-side -side space uh, limitations, or if airflow that's coming into the face of the damper is more conducive through this orientation compared to a horizontal blade. So sometimes you may benefit by having air passing through vertical blades as opposed to a uh, horizontal, you know, where it may hit it more you know, on the flat surface side. In this model, it uses special thrust bearings on the blade axles, and that's what keeps the blade centered in the frame so they don't drag. So a standard CV60 does not use the vertical thrust bearings. So if you turn a standard CV60 90 degrees, you're going to have blades that start dragging on the jam seals. So if in fact you're trying to use vertical blade orientation, you actually want to get a model that's meant for the vertical blade uh, operation. And let me talk a little bit about multi-section damper assemblies. Uh, I think the photos uh, are pretty good, pretty clear as far as showing how this looks and what the, what the general arrangement would be. So we call this jack shafting, and this is how we join multiple section dampers into one operable assembly. So this will be factory supplied standard on any multi-section uh, control dampers. So the jack shaft will consist of bearing brackets, which support the shaft across the face of the damper. 
and then you have linkage that connects uh, the blades to the shaft and then crossover linkage from top to bottom that joins the uh, upper and lower sections depending on the height of the damper. Uh, if it doesn't need it, then it will, won't have crossovers, but if it's tall enough, it will. And the jack shaft is just going to allow all the sections to open and close together. Uh, so if you have a motorized uh, damper, then you have everything operating uh, together. And that's how we accomplish it when we have a large assembly and, you know, just a few actuators. You know, you have to be able to uh, spread out the torque of the actuator. So the jack shafting accomplishes that. So internal mount actuators on a single section, you'll, you're going to get jack shafting because that's how we physically attach the motor. So that, that'll be standard. And then obviously when you have larger damper assemblies. Uh, we also sell jack shaft kits. So if somebody has dampers in the field that they want to jack shaft together, they can order a jack shaft kit and basically it's gonna, gonna come out with all the components that you see in the photo there to uh, join dampers together. Here's an example of a large damper assembly. This was for a data center project in Chicago where they had damper banks that were 36 feet wide, 15 feet high. Now, they had special or specific jack shafting requirements because they were using uh, 10 high torque actuators in 10 sections. So this uh, large damper bank is basically three dampers stacked high all the way across. So they have 10 banks of three stacked high dampers and a motor in each of those banks. And then uh, along with this large assembly, uh, we had uh, packaging and delivery requirements just to make sure the contractor had a easy way to manage and build the symbol of this large uh, damper bank. So if you have a project that requires something similar, you can let us know and we'll be happy to try to accommodate um, you know, to whatever your needs are. So let's move on to our next damper model, which is the CD50. And this is our airfoil blade model produced in extruded aluminum. I like to consider this model the counterpart to the CD60 in terms of overall performance. Uh, and this one too has a long history of being highly specified. It's actually one of the first aluminum dampers on the market. So it has a again, long, long history behind it. Uh, the CD50 is also AMCO certified for class 1A leakage. It uses the Ruscaprene blade seal. Uh, and a flexible stainless steel jam seal, just like the 60. The standard barrier material for this model will be Lexan. Lexan is a polycarbonate. It's extremely durable. The poly polycarbonate is used uh, by many industries. In fact, the iPhone and Galaxy series phones uh, use the same material. Uh, so keep in mind your jack shafting that we just talked about, it will be uh, identical to any other uh, damper. So the configurations uh, work the same way on a CD50 as well. And the CD50 also has the vertical blade version, which is called the CD50V. So the V typically is used whenever we have a vertical blade uh, version of that model. So now we'll move over to our thermally efficient damper models, the TED50 and TED50XT. Both of these models are AMCA Class 1A linkage rated. Uh, they have insulated airfoil shaped blades with a thermal break that's adjacent to the mechanically fastened blade seal. But you can see that in that center photo there. You can see the, the break in the blade uh, between the two uh, twin seals there. So the jam seal that's used for these models is, is an extruded rib type. So it's the same material like the blade seal, it's just a rib type style that's on the, the side jams. And the 1050 models all use the polycarbonate uh, bearing. We do have a stainless steel option as well. So if you're wondering what makes the 1050 different from the 1050 XT, it's only the steel material. So the Rescaprene is used on the 1050 and silicone is used on the 1050 XT. The XT is extreme temperature, so it just has a wider uh, temperature range, you know, cold to hot. So that's the only uh, difference between the two. Otherwise, they share identical features. So the photo, again, in the lower center that shows the closed blades, uh, you can see that our thermal break is in what we call a neutral zone uh, between the two uh, twin seals. And this eliminates a thermal path for hot or cold air transfer and obviously will help save money because it's going to reduce energy costs. And the R value for these models is 2.16. And that's based on a three foot square panel of closed blades. 
this was recently uh, tested by Intertech to the uh, standard test method for thermal performance of building materials and envelope assemblies. So that's uh, relatively new information on the TED models. And you may have guessed we also have a vertical blade version of both of these called the 1050V and the 1050V XT. And while we're talking about thermally efficient damper models, I'd like to point out a newer economy model uh, that we have known as the TED 40, which is also aluminum uh, construction. So this model has a four inch wide frame and four inch wide airflow blades that are filled with polyurethane foam. So the TED 40 uses the, the same rust supreme blade seals, uh, flexible stainless steel jam seals, and the polycarbonate bearings. So it shares the same features as our CD50 and 60. Uh, the TED 40 is also being submitted for R value testing. So we hope to have those results back soon and we'll make that available as well. So if you need a damper that provides a higher degree of thermal efficiency than a standard damper and it still has high per performance overall, this would be a great choice because it will cost less than a 1050. So it's something to keep in mind. Okay, now we'll switch gears and talk about our true round control damper. Uh, we call this our CDRS25. Uh, which is produced in both galvanized and stainless steel. Anytime you have round duct applications from four inch to 24 inch diameters, diameters you should consider using the round damper to get your maximum air performance. So this is gonna have lower pressure drop. Uh, it's generally just a better fit for round applications. Uh, the CDRS offers a class one leakage. It's rated up to 4,000 feet per minute and 10 inches of pressure. And this model uses a neoprene blade seal that's sandwiched between the two blade skins. And then we have uh, stainless steel axle bearings. Again, this is our most popular commercial uh, round damper. So up to now, we've uh, looked at our top four damper models uh, that are uh, the most widely used, the CD60, the 50, the 1050, and the round CDRS25. Uh, so we've examined basically the core features and we understand how multi-sections get assembled. So now I'd like to talk a little bit about damper uh, operators. So damper operators, also known as actuators, they can be factory supplied on any control damper. In fact, we supply quite a bit. Uh, actuator types, they can range from two-position, modulating, pneumatic, explosion-proof, NEMA 4 type, uh, so there's multiple uh, brands out there, different types, so we pretty much should deal with all of them. And Ruskin does in-house cycle and torque testing of all of its standard stock actuators to ensure proper fit and operation. As you can see in the photo there, uh, we have some of the mounting arrangements. Uh, if it's out of the airstream, uh, we also refer to that as external mount. So the two photos on the upper right side, those are going to be out of the airstream, now the one to the far right is going to be uh, a tandem mount, so that's two actuators on one shaft. And then the lower right hand uh, image shows the in the airstream mount or internal mount. So that's pretty much your, your basic actuator uh, mounting arrangements. So the benefit of factory supplied actuators is less field labor or downtime, right? Uh, the contractor just installs the damper, it's pretty much all ready to go, they just power it up. So it's going to be much more efficient and feasible just to have motors coming from the factory so they don't have to try to figure out how to mount them in the field. Uh, plus it just ensures a properly mounted actuator that's fit into the damper. Uh, so you may already know that most direct coupled electric actuators uh, are two position and they have internal springs that basically uh, bring the damper to a fill position when it's non-powered. So we call, we call that spring return. Uh, the label on the dampers will show the direction of the spring. As you can see on this example here, kind of blowing up the little counterclockwise spring symbol there. So that's gonna tell you what direction your spring is turning. And so one common question that we hear is, I ordered my damper for fail close, but I really need it to spring open or fail open. So how can I change it? So in order to change the rotation direction, it's, it's fairly easy. You would just loosen or uncouple the actuator off the shaft, and then they physically flip the damper or actuator around to the other side, so the other side's facing you, 
and then you'll see the label on the, the other side, which will have the opposite rotation for the spray. And then they just slide it on the shaft, re-secure it, re-secure the coupler back on the shaft, and that's pretty much it. So that will give you the opposite operation on the damper. So common question, but it's fairly simple to resolve in the field. Now, one last thing on actuators. Um, if you didn't already know, Ruskin is part of dust controls. And so now we have a newer private label spring return actuator series that we call the RUS for Ruskin. Uh, these models provide the most cost-effective actuator for our dampers. In fact, it's our default selection. Uh, these are available in 24-volt AC-DC, 120-volt, and modulating 24-volt AC-DC. And all these models have the option for a built-in auxiliary switch. So unless you have a different brand or there's a type that you need that's different, this will be the default motor that will be on the majority of our control dampers. And the last item that we'll talk about is the most common damper accessory that we sell or that the industry sells uh, because we use quite a bit of these is the uh, indicator switch. So this is the most common accessory on any control damper and even life safety dampers use quite a bit of uh, uh, switch package uh, accessories. So this allows for an open closed damper status uh, to be indicated through remote indicator lights. So if you route your wires to a you know, building automation system, you have a you know, open closed indication lights, you're going to be able to tell if your damper is open or closed by virtue of the switches making contact. So the SP100 switch package, uh, it's directly linked to the blade. You can see in the photo there on the uh, left-hand side, so you have a, a link rod that basically goes to a bracket that's attached to the blade. So when your blades open and close, there's a lever arm that just pivots between two switches and they make contact to give you that open-close indication. Or you can have the actuator type that has built-in auxiliary switches. So both types are used in the industry and both are proven effective. So it's sort of either or. If you have a preference either way, that's fine. Now, if you have a damper that's already installed in the field and you, you didn't have a switch on it, but you, you need one, you can either retrofit the SP100 on the damper or you can just change the actuator with the built-in switch type. So it's pretty easy either way uh, if you need to retrofit one or the other. So that really concludes our webinar today. It's fairly brief. Um, let me just remind you that next month, Wednesday, August 8th, will be our uh, webinar on the TDP 05K. That's the Thermal Dispersion Airflow and Temperature Probes. So we'll have a session on that next month. And we appreciate your time today. If you have any questions, feel free and reach out to us. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.